I'm starting to poke around a bit more with my scope. Right now I'm looking at pin 4 of the sink inverter which feeds the horizontal sink discriminator and then the vertical oscillator vertical integrator so here's what I'm seeing increase the time base I'm pretty sure these are the sink pulses digital scopes are not the greatest thing to look at TV signals on but anyways but superimposed on that uh, it looks like a pretty darn strong 60 hertz sine wave Huh, that was kind of freaky. I was watching the TV screen and while watching this and when those spikes got really tall the image in the screen changed a bit. <coughs> right now still, I got the sync disabled. Or sorry, AGC. Sorry, I got the AGC enabled. I'm going to disable it. Ah, wow, that made a heck of a difference. <laughs> Gain down. Now those are some nice clean sync pulses. And the image on the screen. Well, not about a sync range. That's interesting. Now I had a feeling that. These circuits were kind of fighting against themselves when I kept changing the capacitor value. It was supposed to be 3900 right now. I got in there 3300. I've tried 4700 and 2200 and 5600, all sorts of different values. And changing them didn't seem to have a huge change on the frequency. Well, this thing is... It's a variable frequency oscillator, yes. This kind of sets the free running frequency as do some of the other components, like the horizontal hold has an effect on it. But really when you're receiving a signal, it's supposed to be influenced by the incoming signal and lock onto it. So it's got it's got a range of frequencies that it can so when I would change the capacitor, I think the circuit was trying to pull it always trying to pull it back towards fifteen point seven five kilohertz but the sync pulses weren't quite strong enough to do it huh. curious about something else too I think all this time I may have been clipping the AGC voltage to the wrong place I had it disconnected now I was tired when I was doing this last night so I can't be sure I have to go back and watch the footage but I think I might have been clipping it here Whereas I should have been clipping it there. This string of resistors and capacitors is very confusing the way it's laid out. Same with the one down there. Uh, anyways, we definitely have minus 6 volts on the key AGC pointing. You can tell it's that because that striped wire is going right into the tuner. and That's part of the AGC circuit. And when I do that, I get a really strong clean sync pulse going through. And the image on the screen really looks like it's trying to lock. So to recap, fighting a few issues here. One, the AGC circuit seems to be screwy. Two, can't could, could focus on the screen. Three, horizontal sync seems to be pretty flaky. Vertical may be too, but it's hard to tell when you don't have a horizontal, stable horizontal image if the vertical image is stable or not. Now that I think I have this in the right spot, and I can see it now that I am getting pretty good, strong, clean. So those would be the horizontal sync pulses right there. And that little bit, I do believe, is the color burst on what they call the back porch. And then this is the video. So the, you see how that kind of... The video changes as the 
whatever's going on in the, in the scene changes, but the sync pulse always stays the same, should stay the same. That's why they use this level to determine the AGC voltage. In theory, anyways. Now, I'm feeding it from a very clean, stable source. I'm not receiving over the air, so this amplitude really isn't going to change whether the AGC is working or not. Anyway. Huh. So, I'm going to try putting 3900 back in there and see what happens. So, another test back to 3900 picofarad on the horizontal coil. And... A uh, silly thought just occurred to me. So this with coil, the one that's got four windings. While cleaning up this terminal strip down here, I disconnected things and then reconnected it. Two of the wires on that are just enameled wire. There's no indication about what's what. I wonder if it's as simple as I need to flip two of these. Maybe the polarity's backwards. <laughs> I got a probe around that. But unfortunately, there are no schematic. Sorry scope images in the Wallace Telliade. There are no scope images in the SAMs, but the Riders does. However, I don't have a hard copy of that. I'll have to look at my phone and bring my laptop down here. Huh, and look at that. Very close to locking with 3900. I'll give the coil the back a tweak. Still not quite, I'm going to play around with it a bit more. It's tough for me to kind of hold the camera while I'm doing all this stuff. But, uh, I, I know it's still not quite right because when these sets work well, they have a pretty wide horizontal range. They're meant to receive all kinds of weak signals over the air and all that. And it should pretty much stay and hold almost the entire rotation, the horizontal hold control. It should not be anywhere near this touchy. Which makes me think that Either the sync pulses are too low going into this discriminator or something in here is not working right. I already double checked the wiring on this and the value, component values. I've tried swapping out two, both these tubes. I'll keep plugging away. So there, it's sort of kind of stable but I tweaked the horizontal control, hold a little bit in that direction. So it's more like it's just a free-running oscillator, and it needs to be constantly tweaked. It's not phase-locking on the incoming sync signal at all. We'll try unclipping the uh, EGC here, and then we this just goes to crap. At least it's something. More poking around, and the more I think about it, the more everything seems to be leading back to that with control. Because it is involved with every problem I've been seeing. So that's this guy. Basically picks a signal off the flyback and it controls the AGC tube and the horizontal sink still poking around and 
keep coming back to the width control because it's responsible for two major issues I'm seeing. The signal coming off of it goes to the AGC tube. Basically, it determines the AGC voltage. And it's key for the horizontal sync discriminator. And we got no horizontal sync. There's supposed to be like a 200 volt positive pulse on the plate of that AGC tube. And there shouldn't be a negative component. But this is what I got. It's going plus and minus pretty symmetrically around 60 volts. So, something ain't right. Also, I looked and in the schematic, they show the white and red leads being reversed. In other words, the red, so this wire and this wire are coming off of that with coil down there. And they show the red wire being grounded and the white wire carrying the signal up to the tube. This says the opposite. I did try flipping the other two wires, the two enameled wires, and that didn't seem to make any difference. So, I don't know for sure if that is a problem, but the circuit seems to have a problem. And then the other big thing standing out is that it's a replacement flyback. And that's just the width coil. The width coil connects to the tap on the flyback. I, I got a double check, so I think I got an X036 replacement flyback. I mean, these replacements are generally are close to the original, but sometimes they're made to be a replacement for a number of others, and they're not quite exactly the same as the original. But this seems like a pretty specialized little circuit, so maybe it's pretty critical to have the original flyback in there. I might have a spare. I'm not sure, um, but that's a possibility. At least I can double check how is it hooked up and check these DC resistances in the flyback and see if that's at least close. Huh, so, still, still scratching my head a little bit, but the one thing I do know is that the two major problems, lack of uh, proper EGC voltage and lack of horizontal sync, are both related to a common component this with control. That's the control, the coil that was damaged when I received the set, the slug had been pushed all the way in and it wasn't mounted securely. So if we look we've got the signal that comes out of it that goes up to the plate of the EGC tube and goes over to the horizontal sync discriminator. So that's the feedback. So we got an incoming horizontal sync pulse from this circuitry, we've got feedback from the flyback coming through from the other side, and the difference is supposed to uh, regulate the frequency of the horizontal oscillator to lock it to the incoming signal. It's also, to, it's also supposed to provide a strong positive pulse enough that this tube will conduct only during the horizontal sync pulses. Well, I've been poking around with the scope. So here, on my phone, I have the rider's info that shows waveforms. So, we're supposed to have a 200 volt peak-to-peak -peak horizontal pulse on the plate of the AGC tube pin 5. That point, right there. What have I got? Not that. <laughs> uh, we got 20 volts per division, so we got about 50 volts peak to peak so we should have a 200 volt positive pulse and not really no negative pulse so we have a very symmetrical pulse around ground so I doubt that tubes even conducting uh, let's see my DC I am DC coupled yeah so that is symmetrical about ground so that's your end right which is going to, of course, screw up the AGC. And similarly, I've looked at the waveforms on the sync separator. They look nothing like this. So, this, like, this waveform should be present on pin 2 of the 6AL5. Move my scoop ground to get over there. 
I can already tell you it doesn't look like that. Sorry for all the horrible camera work while I'm troubleshooting. Switching between looking at schematics and using various bits of test equipment and poking around the set while trying to film is not the easiest thing, so. Oh, there should be pin two on this guy. Pin one and two are actually connected together, so. Auto scale, we've got that mess. Which does not look like that. And that should be 45 volts peak to peak. I'm on the 500 millivolt scale. <laughs> so, uh, it's just, it looks nothing like it's supposed to. So, not, kind of not surprised that we don't have any horizontal sync since the waveforms are just complete garbage. What else can we look at? Well, how about horizontal oscillator, cathode the damper, how about the input to the horizontal output tube? I think that says pin 5, right? Pin 5, the 6BG6. Now that at least looks somewhat reasonable, and I kind of figured it must since we've got high voltage. And let's just see what the voltage peak to peak is. 73 volts. They say 45 volts peak to peak, so that's being driven a bit too hard. Now the one thing I haven't really done a whole lot of is tweaking the controls on the back. So there's a horizontal drive control. That should vary this directly, so... Let me try that. Tool to mesh. That's about as low as I can get it to go, which is 63. But I'm not terribly concerned about that. It's the right shape. It's... I presume the right frequency, more or less. Yeah, basically. It's the signals, it's the feedback signal coming out of that with coil. So, with coil. They don't show it on the schematic or the SAMs, but in the riders they do. They show, or maybe it's on here somewhere. Yeah, here it is, sorry. T405. So white and red, and then three and four are the enameled wires. So white is one, and white going to ground, and two red goes off to up in there, which is correct. So that seems, it does seem to be wired incorrectly. Uh, I did try switching the enameled leads. Uh, it doesn't really seem to do anything because, as we can see, the signal coming out of it is symmetrical. About ground. So I don't have a positive peak, and it's nowhere near as much as it should be. Well, it didn't take me too long to discover that the secondary winding is open on this. That would be the white and red wires there. I swear I measured this earlier and I had continuity. Well, I do not now. Well, that is the outer winding. I suppose there's some benefit to that because it's on the outside, except <laughs> the inner winding, the primary, has far less turns on it. That would be easier to rewind. <sighs> well, the thing kind of looks beat up and kind of nasty, so... If I'm lucky, there might be a break near the surface. So the white goes to a lead that goes in. The, that's on the inner part of the core. And the red goes to a wire, a fine wire going to the outside. And up, and then it starts to go into that. So if I'm lucky, there might be a break really near the outside. I do not have a coil winder. I know there are people that do. I could not do this by hand because it's got this special pattern, but there are coil winders that will do that. 
<sighs> I've never rewound a coil anything like this before, so I am certainly not up to the challenge, but uh, I could probably find somebody who would do it. Maybe one of you guys would do it, and I'd certainly be willing to pay you, because, well, I think the owner of the set would be willing to pay. I will attempt to do what I can. I'll start unwinding and see if I can find a break near the surface anywhere. And if I can, then, uh, you know, I'll patch it back together. Um, as I said, I, I can borrow one from another set if I have to. And I can certainly ask around. There is a part number. It's a 94 A16 Admiral with coil. So, kind of, I mean, when I got the set, he said that the guy working on it said there was a problem with one of the coils that was irreplaceable. Maybe they did kind of know that this was the bad coil, and that's what they were talking about. It's not impossible to find one. It's not impossible to repair it. just might take some doing is all. Well, didn't seem like I had too much to lose, so I started unwinding it in the hope that I would find the brake somewhere near the outside. Oh no, oh no, that was not the case. Where was the brake? With about one turn left on the inner core. So perhaps uh, the primary had shorted to the secondary? Uh, I don't know. I'll go there with the solvent and clean it a bit, but... Yeah, I mean, there really was no salvaging it because the brake was down, buried under however many layers in that was, 10 layers of windings in or so. So, well, that's obviously <laughs> done. Uh, I do have all the original wire. I could measure it. I did not count the turns while I was unwinding it. Uh, it's quite small gauge. I think smaller than anything I've got. Um, another simple way to do it is if you can figure out the gauge, since I have the entire length of it here, I can measure the resistance. And that was the DC resistances from the service info as well. So if you know what the gauge is and you know what the resistance is, you can look up the resistance per foot and you can figure out how long the, the wire is. Or like I said, I could stretch this all out and, uh, and measure it. And then, theoretically, one could re rewind this. Um, there are standard coil winding patterns. I don't know what this one was called. I also don't know how critical it is. Uh, I imagine it would help if it was wound in the same way. Well, it's kind of similar to the pattern you see on, uh, on that uh, horizontal lock control. So, <laughs> well... I think this is a good point to pause the video. So, uh, 94A16. I'm going to do a little bit of looking around. So my initial look um, in service info, there was no replacement made. But that doesn't mean that there never was a replacement made or something similar. So I'll look in the... I think I got a Merit or a Third Arson uh, cross-reference guide. I'll see if there's anything out there. And uh, start putting out the feelers to see if anybody's got a 94A16 coil. This. this is an Admiral 20A1 chassis that I started restoring quite some time ago. And it has a good coil down there. Looks a little bit different, but same part number. So I will temporarily remove it from this set to verify that it fixes the problem. But also, while we're under here, I thought I was curious. So I did this like two years ago, and a lot of the decisions that I made while working on this current chassis, I had made back then, which I find kind of amusing. Is what I'm getting at is where I put the electrolytics. So <laughs> that one, that, I basically put them in the same place. So in other words, I've been through this whole thought process before. But what's also curious about this is, I got all the original micas still in here, and they work fine. Which makes me think whoever replaced them all in that 20B1 chassis I'm working on didn't need to. 
So here's all those micas on the horizontal oscillator that I replaced with C0Gs. There's four of them in there. And this one has a bunch of micas for the vertical integrator. Big old 2200 picofarad. There's four big old micas down there. Can't really get those anymore. And I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler. This set works pretty darn well, except it also has really weird focus issues. Which you'll hear all about when I <laughs> get around to editing the video that I recorded ages ago for this set. Anyways, I see. This is the same coil. Looks a little bit different, but it's the same part number stamped on it. And the resistance between the white and red wire is exactly 75 ohms. I may attempt to rewind the old one if nobody uh, has one turn up. I would guesstimate we've got maybe five layers of wire on there. Maybe six. Thinking it's like 38 gauge, something like that. And it's got that type of winding pattern. I don't know if that's critical versus just winding it from one end to the other and back and forth. But, I mean, once the set's working, it certainly could experiment and get one that works close enough. But for now, I'm going to very gingerly tack this in place and see if it does the trick. I tacked in the coil and removed that lithium battery pack I'd been using on the AGC because I'm being optimistic. Let's give it a try. Hmm. Oh, wait, there it comes. Huh. Okay. Some kind of weird issue with high voltage fade. Something there for an instant. I'm going to try adjusting the horizontal drive control. Adjusting the horizontal frequency control coil rather. It's definitely locking now. 
but we've got like three times what the frequency should be. Uh, that's what's happening, so the oscillator's dying. I'm too far off frequency. It's kind of working. <laughs> It's weird with the brightness, it only works in the middle if I go too high, it fades out. We could have a weak uh, high voltage rectifier. So I turn the brightness up, it draws more current from the uh, high voltage circuit and it fades out. And now we're back to that old problem of the horizontal frequency being off. Through in a 4700 picofarad, it's supposed to be 3900. And uh, still got nothing. I swapped in a different 6SN7 and got it oscillating. And I also put in a new old stock 1B3 high voltage rectifier. And I can go to the brightness all the way up. Nothing craps out. Still got the focus all the way at one extreme. Otherwise, it's pretty darn blurry. But otherwise. It's working. <laughs> Terrible reception down here, but yeah, it's working. So that's what happens to horizontal frequency if it gets off enough, the, the oscillator stops and everything goes to crap. That's what just happened now. I adjusted the horizontal hold and everything just fell out of sync. So I definitely got to play around with this. I don't know why it's so sensitive to different 6SN7s, but definitely putting the right coil in there help. Well, basically fix the problems. So, I've got a with slash AGC coil problem. Thank you for all your suggestions about potentially rewinding it. I hope it doesn't come to that. Um, it may. However, I did a little more digging. And no, there's no direct substitution listed in the service info. However, somebody scanned and posted a J.W. Miller catalog. It's a company that made, and I believe still does make, all sorts of coils. And back in the day, they made a lot of replacements for flybacks and with coils and peaking coils and whatnot. So, I got to looking through this, and it turns out that they made a co two coils. 60, well, we'll see when we get there. And there's something else in here of interest, too, that we're going to talk about a bit. But first, here we go. With linearity controls with AGC wiring. The 6316 and the 6317. For use in the width circuit of older style TV receivers and TV kits when it is desired to add an AGC circuit to the existing circuit. Okay, that's <laughs> basically what I need. Now, this inductance range, I don't know. And I don't know if that's referring to the primary or the secondary. Uh, I do have one I took out of another set. And I still have the primary winding on the original one, but I don't have a good inductance meter. I got one of those cheapo Chinese component analyzers. And, uh, I don't know, but I can certainly try it. And they may have one of these. These also cross to 
Pardon me for a moment while I get the document open. I've been taking some notes here. Uh, it also cross references to a Thord Arson WC-20 and WC-27. Over the years, a lot of these companies consolidated with Thord Arson and Miller and Merritt, and uh, there were several others. Um, so I believe these are basically the equivalent. Um, I may have some of these. I have boxes of new old stock parts that I've stumbled across over the years. Otherwise, I think I've got a source um, for one or both of these. Now, while reading through this, I also, right next to it, sync stabilizer coil, a.k.a. a ringing coil use of the horizontal oscillator multi-vibrator circuit when an external capacitor of 0.0039 microfarad is connected in parallel the circuit will stabilize at 15.75 kilohertz or kilocycles hey that sounds a lot like what I'm working with <laughs> with the 3900 picofarad or 0.0039 microfarad cap but mine's not working right mine I keep trying different capacitor values, but now that I read this, I'm like, okay, this that is definitely the capacitance value I should be using. Mine keeps locking in at odd multiples of like 10 kilohertz or 20 kilohertz. It does not want to lock on 15.75, that is for sure. So perhaps I have an issue with mine. So that's something else I may try syncing or swapping out. Because, man... I've never encountered a set that's been so weird, so flaky. Replacing the AGC coil definitely helped. It's still got a lot of issues. The primary one, again and again, is this thing is not oscillating at the right frequency. Because I got to thinking about it. I should be able to remove this coil. I should be able to pop the AGC tube out. And take this coil off for that matter, and the thing should oscillate it around this frequency. In fact, um, the same ringing stabilizer circuit is used in a number of other cells, including Predictas and, and the service info. When you adjust it, it's just to short it out, to like effectively remove it from the circuit. And it, um, it uh, anyways, that's part of the procedure to get the thing <sighs> working at the right frequency. So I believe the way this works is um, it kind of gets it kind of rings. It's got a natural tendency to, to resonate, to oscillate at that. Kind of like a tuning fork. Um, kind of like it self oscillates. So something something's not right with this. Um, and it's it's so picky with how I with some 6SN7s I put in there that test good or their new old stock that won't even oscillate. Or it's so far off, I get no high voltage. Now, it could all work, come back to the flyback, too. So we got three things that are all really kind of supposed to be working in concert here. The flyback, the sync stabilizer coil, and the with linearity AGC coil. So the original one of this is damaged and been replaced. The original flyback is gone. I think this might be the original, but man. <laughs> what a pain, what a pain. Um, so it's possible I've got one or two of these lying around as well. Again, I don't know which one is the appropriate one to be using, um, but it's worth a shot. And yes, I could pop this out of my 20A1 chassis, which is working, and, and swap it into this set. Uh, I keep, to keep taking parts out of a, basically a working set to get this other set going. So I know I'm going to have to put them back into it. Uh, that's just a pain to keep going back and forth. <sighs> Anyways, I just thought it was interesting the wealth of information in these old um, these old catalogs. It's not just a listing of parts. It's they give you tips on how to hook it into the circuit and and how you can substitute them and and so on. Interesting stuff. They got sample circuits and so on. Uh, down in the basement going through my stashes of new and used TV parts and rediscovering stuff I haven't seen since before we moved. 
Uh, for example, I found my stash of all my new and used controls. Remember I was trying to find a control to replace the bad linearity pot on the uh, Predictus Siesta. And I've got a few other Predictus that have a bad linearity control, so I'm hoping with all this i got another box of controls as well, that I can find something suitable for all this stuff. Um, also, this is kind of interesting. I did a video on this ages ago. But um, this is kind of pertinent to the project we got going on right now. I probably won't need any of it, but I think it's interesting. So I'm going to bring this over and we'll talk about this in a bit. Uh, more controls and miscellaneous parts, some much newer than what I'm working on now, uh, like some RCA thermistors. But here's where it starts getting more interesting. So back in the day, companies like Merritt, Thord Arson, Stancor, Held Orson made replacement TV parts. Like right here, we've got an HS5 ringing coil. Hey, that looks kind of familiar. That's exactly what's in this TV. That coil I keep fighting with and replacing the capacitor across it. Because this TV just keeps... Uh, I suspect there's something not quite right. Either with that coil or the flyback or something else. That it's generating harmonics. Because it's oscillating at like 20 kilohertz or 15... Or, well, pretty much anything but 15.75 kilohertz. Well, this is a potential replacement for that coil. An even potentially better one. Check this guy out. Or no, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is an odd, kind of an oddball thing, a width or linearity coil. And it's got some pretty darn beefy windings on there. A little slug. I don't know if you could... It's a, it's a width if you hook up one of the coils, a linearity if you do the other. Uh, I don't think you typically use both, but uh, that was kind of an odd thing. But somewhere is in here. Let's see if I can rediscover it. Oh, I already took it out of the box. All right. Another horizontal ringing control. Let's see if I get this up with one hand. There we go. Check this one out. This already has the 3900 picofarad mica gap already on it. But I also noticed there's a break in the winding. Kind of hard to see. I'd have to repair it before I use it. And I'm very anxious, to, or not anxious, but curious to see if I could pop this in and see if it would work. Now all of these have different inductances and permeabilities and such. That's why there are so many different types, like these two. They're both horizontal ringing coils, but I'm sure they don't have the same inductance. So, hence my problem. Because there is no official replacement listed for the width coil that I have that's bad. However, there are some that were made that have AGC windings on them. And just because they weren't officially sanctioned replacements doesn't mean that they couldn't possibly work to some extent. Most of the things in here are a bit on the larger side, so they're going to be uh, flybacks and yokes and such. I don't think I have, that's my for color TV, but I don't think I have too many with coils. Uh, I might have one more box somewhere of like merit coils and stuff, otherwise, um, I have heard from one or two people online that might have something suitable, or have, have one of those, you know, other coils of merit or whatnot that I'm looking for, you know, that I think might work. Because, boy, I really don't want to try winding that horizontal oscillator coil. So I'm going to keep digging through this and take out anything that looks like it might be useful in this project and bring it over to the workbench. I dug up three horizontal ringing coils. 
This one was the closest to the resistance of the original. In fact, it's almost identical. Winding similar, same length. It's wound a bit different, different pattern. Um, but it won't fit in that mounting hole. It's smaller. Uh, this one fits, but this has a bit higher resistance. And uh, this one was considerably higher resistance. Not that it really matters, it's the inductance. Or the, I mean, these all resonate at the same frequency. They all take a 3900 picofarad capacitor, so as far as that goes, that's all the same. Anyways, here goes power up test number 6352. Let's see what happens. There is no official replacement for this coil either, by the way. And I could don't see anything wrong with the original. But something I went over that yet again for the umpteenth time. Ooh, we got some arcing. Ooh, well, I got it out on camera this time. Hey, we may have arcage, but Damn, we have a stable image. Kind of. And, and the focus is good <laughs> occasionally when it's kind of arcing or not arcing. It's weird to swallow it's when that arc happens, the focus is good for a second. But damn, we have a stable image. That's how it should be. Horizontal hold can almost go through the entire rotation and it doesn't lose hold. That's how it should be. And I haven't even tweaked the darn thing. It's probably arcing more because now that the thing is on frequency, the high voltage is higher and the, the image is definitely noticeably brighter. Man, I wonder what kind of life this set has had. There's so many issues with it. But, huh. Let's see if the tea has settled down for now. <laughs> Maybe not. I'm gonna flip the chassis down. I think it's about time I dealt with one uh, long overdue issue that so the picture tube is not securely mounted. This strap is way too loose and this picture tube is rocking a bit. It's got an external conductive coating and there's a contact wire down at the bottom and when it's tipped on its side it might not be making good contact. Now it's got a doorknob cap which supply, which acts as a high voltage filter. That's also what the external coating on this does. So would there be arcing if the external ground wasn't making contact. Maybe. Maybe recall when I was playing around with the Predict the Holiday and I had a CRT that was going gassy. We had all kinds of arcing around the ground wire on external coating. So it certainly wouldn't hurt to make sure that we got a good DAG coating on the outside, that it's making good contact with that wire. Um, replace some of the worn out rubber cushioning that should be there. This is almost directly metal on glass on the front with the support piece. That's not cool. Okay, so it doesn't have the official little original horizontal ringing coil. But damn, what a difference. I mean, I haven't even touched the thing yet. And it just, we have great, fantastic horizontal lock. So I'm inclined to leave it in there. <laughs> Uh, mount it more securely. Um, weird. Um, so, I've been restoring vintage TVs for over a decade. I've, I, I lost track of how many I've done. I've never had to replace it with coil, a ringing coil, linearity coil, even a flyback. There have been times when I thought the flyback was bad, but I ended up it was something else. 
So I don't know what kind of life this set has had. It's got all these issues, but geez. And if nothing else, it helped me work on my troubleshooting skills. I also got to work on that focus, but you know. The main thing was we got to set working. So I got to get another with, with coil. Um, I, I would prefer not to try rewinding that. It would be an interesting exercise. Um, that type of winding pattern, um, I'd probably have to make up my own. I know there are instructions out there. It can be done. I don't have that kind of time or patience to build a contraption that I may never need to use again. Um, so I got a lead on a few similar with coils. Since I just randomly grabbed a horizontal ringing coil and popped it in and it worked, who's to say a random with coil with an AGC winding wouldn't work pretty well too. So that's the thing about these sets, like when I find resistors that were off value or tubes that tested marginal and all that. These sets were designed with to operate with a huge range of tolerances. Um, a resistor doubling in value probably wouldn't even notice a performance difference. They really are pretty forgiving. That's why I got all these adjustment controls on the front too. Um, so, you know, when I was finding resistors, they were like three times their stated value. I replaced them. It didn't make any difference. That's typically how it is with these sets. Um, when there's something majorly wrong, it's because there's some part that's really, like a, a coil's gone open. I mean, it's some, it's like a showstopper. However, when you get to the fine little details, <laughs> like there's a little bit of faint vertical line over here, and that's when you get into, that's when stuff starts to matter, like lead dress, or swapping out horizontal output tubes, or damper tubes that may test perfectly, but when you put them in the set, so this is caused by ringing. I can adjust the drive control on the back, I might get rid of it, but I might have to swap some tubes to find one that likes better. So sometimes it, <laughs> subtle differences matter, usually they don't. Certainly not enough to kill the set. And boy, I mean, how annoying it is that with coil, or sorry, that ringing coil, the DC resistance on it is correct, it looks fine. Why doesn't it work? I don't know. I don't know. But enough babbling, I'm going to bed. So happy to finally see a stable image on a stupid TV.